it is 45 degrees out right now. I'm not used to these cold temperatures. <laughs> I've been running the heater. Fortunately, this site is a site with electric hookup, so I'm able to just run the electric heater, which makes it easy. I do have one of those uh, Mr. Buddy propane heaters, which I've never, I've, I tested it before I left the house, but so on this trip, I've not had to use it. Uh, I could use, be using it right now if I wanted, but you know, why waste the propane when I don't need to? Uh, but yeah, I knew it was possible that I'd be dealing with some cold weather and I was surprised. I haven't had that much cold weather on this trip. Now I'm getting it. <laughs> I am at Watson Mill Bridge State Park in Com well, near, I guess it's considered Comer, Georgia. I passed Comer as I was coming here. Uh, it's a historic site. Uh, let me just kind of read what's on the pamphlet here. I'm going to get out and show you guys around here in a bit. I'm hoping the sun comes out a little more. It's supposed to be really nice later, I think, and, or at least the low 70s. Um, we'll see. <laughs> they have a nature trail. They have a bunch of little trails here. Uh, one just for walking. That's a two-mile nature trail, which I'm definitely going to do that. And then they have a biking, hiking, kind of a multi-use trail. Uh, they have about 15 miles of horse trails also. It's named, obviously, after an old covered bridge. Watson Mill Bridge contains the largest original site covered, original site covered bridge in the state. It spans 229 feet across the South Fork River, built in 1885. The bridge is supported by a town lattice truss system held firmly together with wooden pins. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The old Watson, Watson grist mill, for which the bridge is named after, was operating in the 1800s uh, before it, there, it's long gone. There's no remnants of that left, but there's, uh, the present dam here was built in 1905, um, and is part of the hydroelectric plant. So yeah, I'm going to be checking all that out before I go. Since I'm trying to kill time, and let the sun warm things up a bit. I'm going to make some oatmeal, kind of warm the body up. And, uh, yeah, then I'll get going and show you guys around. I'll show you my campsite. Really nice campsite. So, I have my oatmeal going. I had somebody ask me where I store my bedding. And I thought, well, others may be wondering the same thing. So, let me show you. I store it right here under the loft, right over top of my battery compartment. And no, they don't fall out when I'm driving. Only, well, once or twice I have had them fall out. But, I mean, they're not going to do any damage if they do. But it's rare. And for bedding, I just use, I have a couple sleeping bags, but I usually just use the one, which is actually a quilt, um, backpacking quilt. Uh, a flat sheet pillow, and I have a flannel liner that I use when I need it. But yeah, just stores right there. I usually stick my pajamas in there also, so it's all together. These cold temperatures are a reminder that it's almost time for me to head back to southwest Florida. I've been slowly inching my way south, but I just have... One more campground after this I'm going to be staying at, and then I'm heading back. Uh, should be nice. Enjoy the holidays. I think the temperature, gosh, I know it's quite a bit warmer there right now. So it, it, usually around the holidays, temperatures are really nice there. We do get a few cold spells, um, 
you know, rarely does it reach freezing, but we get some temperatures where we'll have 40 degree mornings, usually like around January, late December, January, we'll start seeing maybe even early February sometimes we'll see some temperatures like that, but big difference. <laughs> All right, let's do this. <laughs> get the circulation going. I'm pretty sure there's a trailhead right up here as you come into the campground. So it's just three quarter mile to the visitor center and covered bridge. Now this makes like a loop. So, or actually, is it, yeah, it's like a loop, I think. I'll show you guys the map here in a little bit. And I think when I get to a portion of this trail, I can actually spur off a little bit and go to the right, see some other things, and then head back toward where it spurs again. All right, let's go this way. All the leaves make it a little hard to see where the trail is at, but you can kind of make out the worn path. Says the room below this small dam is all that is left of the old hydroelectric plants that supplied energy to the local textile milling industry for nearly 50 years. Let's go over and see if we can walk through the bridge. I know you can drive through it, so I would think you could walk through it. <laughs> history here and all the use this bridge got, the construction, wow, let's look out 
here. Here comes a car. So I'm on the other side of this river now. It is just so pretty in here. There's picnic areas all through here. Lots of parking. I just love this little state park. It's considered one of the most picturesque state parks in Georgia. And I can see why. There's just so many great vantage points along here. I, I kind of lost track of which trails are which, but I'll go through the map and try to discern that. I think this is the South Fork Trail that I'm right adjacent to right now. And I think it crosses where we saw the slewway. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is beautiful and I love that you can come out here and get right up close to the water. So this trail that I'm on right now is about a 2.7 mile loop, I think. And so I'm probably just gonna wander around by the river here. And when it starts to break away from the river, I'll probably head back toward the direction I came. What a beautiful little river, the South Fork River. Now tell me this is not the most perfect picnic view. I want to show you the map. Okay, so the campground is here. And right here is where the trailhead begins from the campground. You can also access the trailhead from up at the visitor center there. And I think what I did, I went down, I took a right, I came down this way. And then I went this way here. And showed you guys the view from this area, looking at the bridge. Went through the bridge and from this area, I showed you the view looking at the bridge and dam. Then I followed this here a little ways and turned around. Cause I didn't really feel like doing this loop here. I'm mostly interested in looking at the river today but yeah i'm wanting to stop at the visitor center so that's another reason i'm working my way i'll walk back through the bridge and then go over toward the visitor center and then i'll probably come back along this trail 
again, but on that other part of the loop. A word of warning, when you're coming to stay at this park, if you have a taller vehicle than nine foot, do not come down this road. It's Watson Mill Road. Don't come from the north. You want to make sure you come from the other side of this bridge because you cannot go under this bridge. You have to turn around and go the other direction. I didn't have to do that. Fortunately, I did my research first, but it would have been a pain to have to go back around. Fortunately, lots of places you can turn around. And this is what's holding it together. <laughs> pegs, wooden pegs. Very cool. Now the visitor center is right up here on the hill and that's where you check in when you're camping. It's a really tiny little visitor center, but what I want to do is look and see if they have stickers. I didn't get a chance to look around when I went in there because I'm trying to start a sticker collection for all my travels. I got a sticker. <laughs> They really didn't have much in there. They had a couple t-shirts, two types of stickers, and some patches, and a, I think a metal pen. You know, like a, that you stick on your clothes or backpack or whatever. So it's a really tiny place. I felt self-conscious of videoing in there. It's mainly just for checking in. Yeah, I'm gonna head back to camp and make some lunch or maybe i'll just get a snack i don't know what yet <laughs> and there's my campsite site number six i'll put stuff away and then show you guys around so i always start by showing you guys the view from the door of my van because that's what i'm always looking at the most when i'm in the van it's a nice shady site and it warmed up to be beautiful today <laughs> really happy about that has a tent pad that runs along here it's a pull-through site that's looking out toward the back it has a really nice fire ring and then the picnic table sits over here overlooking this shady area It's like a service road down there. I've not seen any traffic on it, which is nice. And then from the picnic table, looking out toward the road in the front of the van, there's not a lantern hook. Not that that's a big deal or anything. I got my rug out this time, a chair, and table. It's been nice. The bathhouse is right up there on the hill. Looks like there's some areas for community gatherings, cookouts, that sort of thing, I think, is what that is. The bathrooms here are really clean. Some of the cleanest I've seen in these campgrounds. Showers have locking doors and seem like they are probably clean daily. The trash cans are empty. They have hooks, a bench. Uh, the toilets look clean. They even have some deodorizer in there. And it's just kept well kept. The camp hosts here are doing a good job. <laughs> and there's looking down the road. It has electric hookup and water. So that is my site.
So here's what I decided to have for lunch. Crackers and a fruit salad and Miyoko's cashew cream garlic and herb cheese spread. It's a vegan cheese made from cashews and it undergoes a fermentation process. It's really good. And this wine a friend gave me. We drank most of it, but I'm having what's left. The Wonderful Wine Company. And I thought it was funny what it says on the bottom. Tastes like dolphin rides and being promoted to head astronaut. Hmm. <laughs> but organic grapes, sustainably farmed, vegan friendly. It tastes pretty good. <laughs> I haven't tried it with this yet. We'll see how it pairs. This is the life. <laughs> I enjoy this. I spend just enough time on the road and then I'm ready to go back for a little while and get back out again and do some more traveling. It's nice being able to travel with the seasons and experience kind of the best of the weather, you know, even though I had some time there where I was, it seemed like I was, it was never going to stop raining. There, I would go to one campground and the next campground would be raining. The next, it was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, but I mean, come on. This is like a little apartment, you know, it's nice and dry and cozy inside, you know. I hope to do a, van, a full van tour. I've not yet done a full van tour <laughs> of, of the inside of my van. You know, you can, when you watch enough of my videos, you can kind of see it all. But um, I should do a full van tour. But I have a couple more things that I want to do to this van. And then I'll do a van tour after that. Oh my gosh, there's a deer right there. Gosh, can you guys see him? Well, that lunch kind of messed with my appetite and I wasn't hungry at dinner time, but now I'm getting hungry. So I'm just going to make something quick. I think uh, I'm going to cook some because it's easy cleanup, cook some broccoli in the Instant Pot, put it over some pasta, add a sauce. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. it's uh, That'll help warm it up in here because the temperature is dropping now that it's almost dark. The good thing is I already have camp packed up outside So, because I want to leave early in the morning. And I didn't want to do it in the morning because I know it's going to be really cold then. <laughs> so all I have to do out there now is unplug, take down my porch lights, so they're magnetic porch lights. And uh, tonight I'll get all this mess pick, cleaned up, pick up, pack up as much as I can. So when I get up in the morning, I won't have that much to do and hit the road. <laughs> So my pasta is almost done. I'm going to get the broccoli started in the instant pot. And for frozen broccoli, all you have to do is bring it up to pressure. Put it on high pressure and set it to zero. Then I release it right away once it's up to pressure and it's cooked perfectly. And so cleanup is easy. It's just pour it off, wipe it out, stash it away. Just have to drain the pasta when it's done and then I'm gonna saute up a little garlic and lemon and add pepper in, in olive oil and pepper, salt, probably more salt. I already salted the water that the pasta's in. But uh, yeah, well, I've been doing this. I've been multitasking. I got my bed all made. So after I eat, I can crawl in it and I have some editing I want to do. I 
Well, I'm about to call it a night. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you <laughs> for watching and coming along with me on my day. Tomorrow morning, I'm leaving early, so I want to get a good night's sleep. I'm going to do a little bit of editing. There's some bugs in here. <laughs> I want to do a little editing, and then I'll turn the lights out and go to bed. See you next time. Bye.